the seven Noahide laws, sixth commandment, respect all creatures, do not eat flesh that was severed from an animal before it died. Although transgression of this command applies specifically for land mammals and birds, it is also meant to teach the importance of not inflicting unnecessary pain or suffering on any creature. This explains details of the following one obligation and of five prohibitions that are included in this commandment to Gentiles and its offshoot. One, if meat was severed from a living land mammal or bird, one may not eat from that meat while the creature is still alive. Included in this prohibition is not to inflict cruelty or unnecessary pain on any living creatures. Two, if meat was severed from a living land mammal or bird, one may not eat from that meat even after the creature has died. Three, to be guardians over nature and the life of all creatures so that they will not be destroyed unnecessarily. Four, not to cause mating together of two different species of animals. Five, not to graft together two different species of fruit trees. Six, not to unnecessarily castrate or neuter an animal. For most of us, the story of Noah and the ark ends with the rainbow as God's sign of his covenant with Noah. However, a covenant requires the input of two parties. So yes, there are also the rules that humanity is required to obey as their contribution to the covenant. Although most of the precepts in the Hebrew scriptures only apply to Jews, the seven Noahide commandments are considered a covenant with all of humanity. Therefore, it is important for everyone to understand these divine laws so that all may uphold their part in the covenant. One of these Noahide commandments is that which in Hebrew is referred to as limb from a living animal which is the prohibition against eating flesh that was severed from a living animal. On the surface, this seems like an easy concept to grasp, and it is. It is an important statement of the limitations imposed on each individual in light of the broader scriptural permission for humanity to have dominion over the animals. It is also a statement of God's concern for the welfare of animals. Humanity's responsibilities for animal welfare is further developed in the Hebrew scriptures to encompass the broader concept of avoiding the infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering upon living creatures, which is the concept of not doing any harm to animals unless there is a good reason to do otherwise. It is thus made clear that in God's judgment to treat an animal cruelly is wrong. Therefore, Hebrew scripture, by showing this caring for animals, also teaches by implication how much worse it is to treat people poorly. So it is clear, as one of the seven Noahide comments that are incumbent on all humanity, Hebrew scripture is making a very powerful statement of God's vision for humanity. In our generation, humanity has begun to re-examine many of its core values, and one outcome has been an increasing concern for establishing governmental and corporate standards for animal welfare, and for some, the relevance of animal rights in this process. So it is important that we now look closely and seriously at the guidance provided by the Torah's Noahide Code in this important area. As has been the practice in Jewish law over the approximately 3,300 years since the giving of the Torah through Moses, the implementation of any one of God's commandments has always been very carefully considered, including all of its details and ramifications. Throughout Jewish history, this process has been applied to the Noahide Code, just as it was to virtually all other subjects within the oral tradition of the Torah. Various experts, sages, and rabbis over the course of time taught and recorded their codifications, commentaries, and responsa, and thereby provided clarifications and explanations of the fundamental texts of the Ora Torah, which includes the Mishnah and the Talmud, the Mishnah Torah, and Maimonides or Rambam. Furthermore, new situations arise over the generations that need to be ruled upon, based on the principles of the existing rulings that cover the full spectrum of Torah law. Over time, some opinions are accepted by the majority of leading rabbis and become normative. 
while others are not widely accepted and assume the status of minority opinion. 